We are back, Jack, with another Gauss Jordan elimination problem. And it's a little bigger. I want you to get a bigger and better understanding of it. But uh, I also would like you to start to see this in terms of a linear transformation. Remember, that's kind of where we started with this. So we have this system of equations, 3x minus 2y plus z equals 1, x plus y plus 3z equals 2, minus 2x minus 2y minus 6z equals minus 4. This is a system of linear equations. It may have no solution. It may have exactly one solution. It may have an infinite number of solutions. We're just going to have to see. And that's one of the things you're going to use for Gauss-Jordan. But what I'd like to have you look at this is uh, we're, we're going to do the augmented matrix in a second. But just here's these are this codes up in matrices as the matrix A times the vector x right here and it equals the, the matrix B. Notice what we have here. Oh, let's see, I'm a little short on room. So this, this is a three by three, and we're multiplying it by a three by one. So of course, it's gonna spit out a three by one. So in some sense, and we haven't really talked about vectors, and we're, I'm gonna lead this into vectors. You can think of this as a vector from three space. And so we're acting on this vector, and we're bringing it back into three space. Um, let's see what goes on. But right now, let's just get our Gauss-Jordan on. First thing we need is the augmented matrix. Uh, this code's up like this. 3 minus 2, uh, 1, did 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 1, uh, 1, 1, 3, 2, minus 2, minus 2, minus 6, and minus 4. OK. so. A couple things. This is our pivot point up here where the 3 is. So I can do one of two things. I can divide the first row by 3, so it's 1, because it, we need it to be 1. Or I can just swap these two rows, one way or another, if you'll pardon the unintentional bad pun, and it was unintentional. I need a 1 there. So because if I divide by 3, I'm going to get fractions, and I am doing this by hand. Um, I'm going to just swap these. I may end up getting fractions anyway, but so for this, I'm going to swap um, row 2 for row 1. Perfectly legitimate procedure. So the next matrix will look like this. 1, 1, 3, da, 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 2, uh, 3, minus 2, 1, 1, and minus 2, minus 2, minus 6, and minus 4. I'm probably only going to have enough board space here to do one more operation, and then we'll uh, jump to the next board. So here's my first pivot point, and of course, I need everything underneath it to be zeros. So I'm going to uh, go from here. I'm going to do row 2 minus 3 row 1, and uh, row 3 plus 2 row 1. Why did I pick these? The reason that I picked these is because minus 3 times 1 plus 3 is 0. That's what I needed to happen. Uh, 2 times 1 plus negative 2 is 0. That's what I needed it to happen. Uh, we will have to get to the next board. All right. Let's do some more Gauss Jordan. Remember, so here's our matrix. And what we did was we converted it. We swapped some rows. And now we're going to take, uh, this is the pivot point. This is the row we're going to use to manipulate the other rows to get rid of the 3 and the minus 2. We're going to take row 2 and subtract 3 times row 1 because uh, 3 times 1, or sorry, minus 3 times 1 plus 3 is 0. But this is the row I'm manipulating, so I'm just going to copy it down. I'm not actually changing it. All right. Now, three times, uh, minus 3 times 1 plus 3 is 0, which is what I wanted to do. Uh, minus 3 times 1 minus 2 is minus 5. Minus 3 times 3 is minus 9, plus 1 is minus 8. And minus 3 times 2 is minus 6, plus 1 is minus 5. So that's what's happening for the second row. Now I'm going to take and add 2 times row 1 to row 3. So 2 times 1 plus uh, negative 2 is 0, which is what I wanted to do. 2 times 1 uh, is 2 plus negative 2 is 0. 2 times 3 plus negative 6 is 0. 
2 times 2 is 4 plus negative 4 is 0. Whoa! Whoa, whoa, whoa! What happened there? An entire row went away. That's going to be very significant, and this is an introduction into that kind of significance, and this is slowly going to lead us into vectors, which is coming shortly. But anyway, we'll continue with this. Now remember, so this is our next derivation. Uh, here is our next pivot point. However, it is not a 1. So what are we going to do? Everybody all at once, divide by minus 5, divide by minus 5. Uh, okay, so we do this, row 2 divided by minus 5. We don't do anything with the other rows right now. And incidentally, I've seen many catastrophes happen when people who think this is boring, it is kind of. Uh, try and do too many operations at once. Uh, it's very efficient though. Uh, I strongly suggest that you be able to do a small one like this just so you know what's going on and uh, do it piece by piece so there's a nice derivation that you can eventually find any errors that might creep in. Okay, the first row we're not changing. One, one, three, uh, two. Uh, 0 divided by negative 5 is 0, negative 5 divided by negative 5 is 1, negative 8 divided by negative 5 is positive 8 fifths, uh, negative 5 divided by minus 5 is 1, and here we have 0, 0, 0, 0. Hooray, it's positive 1. Uh, that's our next pivot point, and now all we have to do is get rid of this because this is already 0. So at the next point, we're going to do row 1, and we're going to subtract row 2 because 1 minus this one goes to 0, and that's all that I needed to happen. So, um, 1 minus 0 is still 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. 3 minus 8 fifths, okay, so we got to have a little scratch paper here. Uh, 3 minus 8 fifths, uh, this is the same as, so I need a common denominator. There's really a 1 over here. Multiply the top by 3 and the bottom, or, top by 5 and the bottom by 5, because I need a common denominator of 5. This is the same as 15 minus 8 all over 5. 15 minus 8 on a good day is probably 7, 7 fifths. Do I believe that? Yeah, for the moment. So this will become uh, 7 fifths. And then um, 2 minus 1 is 1. And this goes down a little more. And now, so now I'm just going to recopy this over, right? And so this is 0, 1, 8 fifths, and 1. And this is 0, 0, 0, 0. So now, what on earth does this mean? Um, well, we're going to have to go back and recode this up and find out what the solutions to this are. We'll be right back. What does it mean? What does it mean? What does it mean? Okay, so here's what we got when we did our row reduction. Well, remember uh, what this is short for. This is the x column right here, and I, this is where we haven't really talked about vectors yet, but you're going to get it, and I'm sure you've seen, have some kind of idea about it. So there's the x column. Here is the y column. Here's the z column. Here's the equals. Uh, this would code up matrix-wise like this. Um, this is short for uh, 1, 0, 7 fifths, uh, 0, 1, 8 fifths, and 0, 0, 0 times x times y times z is equal to 1, 1, 0. And of course, um, so really how to read this basically is this is 1 times x plus 0 times y, which I'm not going to write, plus 7 fifths z is equal to 1. I left a little space for a y column. This says 0 times x, which is just 0, plus 1 times y, which is y, plus 8 fifths times z, 8 fifths times z is equal to 1. And now what are we to do with this? This says 0x, zero 0y, zero 0z zero times, or equals 0. 0 equals 0. Incidentally, this is a very important uh, thing to think about here. This bottom row says 0 equals 0. What that means is that, um, let me back up just a second. What this means is that the, the matrix is consistent. If you would have had like 1 equals 0, then the, it would have been inconsistent. But here, this lead 1 in the x column says x is real. It exists. 
The lead one in the Y column says Y is real, and I mean it, it shows up, it matters in the, in the, in the order of operations. Uh, it exists. There is no lead one for Z. What that means is that whatever value Z was, was irrelevant to the equation past how uh, X and Y are dependent on it. And this is what I mean. Let's solve out for X. Uh, if we solve out for x, we have x is equal to, ooh, that's a, not a very attractive equal. We'll subtract 7 fifths z from both sides. So x is equal to 1 minus 7 fifths z. y is equal to 1 minus 8 fifths z. And z didn't show up. And what we do is we call z a parameter. And usually what you do is if you only have one parameter, you just call it t because Typically speaking, when you're using parameters, things are varying with time. So um, once again, this is a, is a three-dimensional column vector, and we're going to talk more about that in just a minute. But you write your vectors, your column vectors like this, x, y, z. So this, the solution to this would be, um, anytime we have a z now, we're going to call it t, would be this, x, which is 1 minus 7 fifths t y is 1 minus 8, terrible 8 fifths t, and then z is t. And this, so here are the solutions to this. t is any real number. Um, let's pick a convenient t and then go back to the original uh, equation set and see what's going on with this. Uh, how about t equals 0? If t is equal to 0, then this codes up as 1, 1, 0 is the solution. Let's check it out. Back soon. All right, so we did this Gauss-Jordan elimination. Um, we cleaned it up. We found that all vectors of a certain point, and I believe it was uh, 1 minus 7 fifths t, 1 minus 8 fifths t, and t were the solutions to this. And we let t equal 0 just because I want to do an easy one. Uh, let's see what if it really works. Uh, so this codes up in matrix talk as 3 minus 2, 1, uh, 1, 1, 3, minus 2, minus 2, minus 6. Here is the matrix A. Our vector uh, x, y, z is going to be this, is going to be 1, 1, 0. And this is, so we could look like... We could do it like this. And does this, in fact, equal what it's supposed to equal, which is the three-dimensional column vector 1, 2, minus 4? Well, let's do our multiplication now. And we're, I want you to, <laughs> I know you're paying close attention, uh, but I'm going to show you something right now that in a second, the next video is going to be really cool and kind of blow your mind. Uh, so this is, remember these columns. Let's just, uh, let's look at this, right? This is going to be this. Um, is going to be a 3 by 1 matrix. So this is going to be A11, A21, A31, right? So let's look at this. This is uh, the first row times the first column. That's the only column that there is. Uh, 3 times 1 is 3, plus minus 2 times 1 is minus 2. That is 1, and plus 1 times 0, so this is in fact 1. 1 times 1, okay, uh, second row, first column, second row, first column. 1 times 1 is 1, plus 1 times 1 is 2, uh, plus 3 times 0 is 2 plus 0. This is 2, and it does equal 2. <laughs> you know what, I, I almost said something that was going to make us have to reshoot this again, and I'm glad I didn't. Uh, that's right. Remember what we're trying to make it equal. We're trying to see if it, in fact, equals this, which is B. Oh, sometimes I can be good. Uh, okay, and then it's going to be minus 2 times 1 is minus 2. Minus 2 times 1 is minus 2. Minus 2 and minus 2 is minus 4. Plus minus 6 times 0 is minus 4. And there it is. Um, we found the solution to it where this matrix A times the, and we usually, we're going to start thinking about matrices more in terms of vectors. And, um, but this is how this works. Where we're going in a second is vector spaces, um, spans, null spaces. 
Some of the coolest of the cool is coming right up.